Hi everyone, this is Matt Swarczyk. Welcome to another episode of our show four, which is focused on Redmond. Uh, this second semester, our students in the advanced television class produced a bunch of production pieces. This first uh, episode you were going to see was mainly produced by Seth Dougherty. Uh, he got the opportunity to sit down with our uh, principal, Tom Grine, and our incoming principal, Drew Bauman, and was able to have a nice sit-down interview with both of them. And you will get to see first the interview with Mr. Grind. So here we go to Seth and his interview with Mr. Grind. Hey guys, my name's Seth. Some of you may know me from the other TV shows that I've done. Recently, Red is the New Black and War. Today on 4, I have a wonderful guest. Um, I have the principal for Foster Road Junior Senior High School, Mr. Tom Grind. Mr. Grind, I want to thank you for coming out and having this interview with your busy schedule that you have. Um, so we're going to go way back. I want to ask you, what changes have the school had since you graduated? Like, what were the good things that's changed and the bad things? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, education has changed quite a bit, Seth. Uh, back until the early 90s, you know, you uh, fulfilled your graduation requirements, you took the classes that you had to take, you passed them, you earned those credits, and then uh, you got your diploma. And, of course, as you're well aware of, uh, we're in an age now, starting in, in the early to mid-1990s, where, uh, you know, they started with the, uh, you know, the testing. Uh, the tests that you have to pass in order to graduate and those kind of things and um, in the last couple of years that has multiplied now to where we have uh, even even a lot more tests you know we're doing away with the uh, higher graduation tests at the end of this year uh, and then uh, you know, in the following years we're going to be doing end of course exams and part testing and things like that and uh, just a lot more emphasis on uh, the testing aspect of it which uh, you know is good uh, in a lot of ways, Seth, but it does take a lot of instruction time away uh, from the teachers and things like that. We're going through that right now, so you're well aware of that, Seth. You know, we've had to go to block scheduling and classes meeting every other day and extending the length of periods and things like that. So uh, it's it's a little bit of, uh, you know, with being the first year of doing it, uh, you know, it's uh, been a lot of uh, planning, a lot of time spent. Uh, and adapting, you know, throwing the calamity days, Seth, you know, ten calamity days. So well, you know, it's been a, it's been a little bit of a rough semester for us oh, between yeah. the calamity days and the testing and all the things going on. But uh, you know, I think that uh, you know, back when I was in school here, uh, I was a sophomore when this building opened in 1970, and uh, you know, it was uh, a different time. You know, uh, not a lot of technology. Uh, of course, we're just infused with technology and education now. Uh, I remember them having typewriting classes here in this building when I was going to school. Uh, you know, computers were about uh, 25 years out when I was a, a student here, and uh, I think that uh, you know a lot more face-to-face -face conversation. You know, today with uh, emails and Facebook and, and all those different kind of things and uh, cell phones. Yeah. Obviously, uh, when I was in school, uh, you know, you had to use a landline phone to communicate with somebody or talk to them in person, and that was. That was pretty much it. You just couldn't dial somebody up driving down the street and have a conversation with them and things like that. But uh, you know, uh, you know, things change a lot superficially like that with technology and things like that, Seth. But I still think that uh, you know the community is a strong community. We have a lot of pride in this community. I think that uh, you know our student body represents our community very well. Uh, the faculty here are very, very dedicated people, and uh, you know, are trying to do the best they can by our students and for our students. And uh, it's been a great place to work. Uh, this is my hometown, Seth. So, uh, you know, I was tickled to death to have the opportunity to come back to Foster. I taught for five years over in Clyde, Ohio. And that was a good experience for me. And uh, you know, then I came over here in 1986 and. Uh, started teaching and coaching here and then in the mid 90s I got into administration as the assistant principal. After you graduated from Foxtoria and you went to play football over the Iowa Hawkeyes, what made you come back? Well, you know, I think my ties to the community, Seth, you know, I uh, finished up my uh, education degree, did my student teaching out in Iowa City and then uh, at the time I uh, had applied to Foxtoria City Schools but they didn't have any job openings so, uh, you know, I needed to have a job so uh, you know I just put my application into surrounding schools and things of that nature and uh, got a call from Clyde High School and uh, and I think I, I, got, I got into education because of the, the strong role models that I had growing up and going to school I, I admired a lot of the teachers and coaches that I had throughout high school looked up to them a great deal Seth and uh, 
and I always had a very competitive nature and uh, so I knew I wanted to get back into coaching and I, obviously the best way to do that is to get into education, be with the students every day in the classroom and uh, try to touch people's lives but still you know, try to impart on them some values, you know, the value of hard work, uh, teamwork, togetherness, uh, you know, a family, you know, being a family because I've always believed that athletic teams need to be like a family, you know, you gotta, you gotta work hard, you gotta be able to get on somebody that's not working hard, you know, you gotta be, all be on the same page as far as what the objectives are, you know, what uh, defenses you're gonna run, what offenses you're gonna run, you know, you gotta have people practicing hard while they're out there in order to be better and uh, just that competitiveness. Yeah. Seth, I've always been a very competitive person and uh, you know uh, that uh, you know, I thought that the best avenue to take in order to achieve that in my lifetime was to get into education and uh, do, do some coaching. As you were growing up as a child, did you always want to become a principal or what did you want to become? You know, I can't really say that I did, Seth, you know, when I was when I was growing up, you know, it, it was quite different, uh, you know, back when I was growing up uh, in Foss Story back in, uh, you know, the late 50s and early 60s, and then uh, I graduated from Foss Story High School in 1973, but uh, you know, I remember uh, getting our first television set when I was about six years old. It was a black and white television, and uh, honestly, Seth, I remember uh, we had a... Uh, TV room outside of my bedroom and uh, when those TVs first came out I'd walk out and if the TV was on you know if I just had my my uh, underwear on I'd run back into my bedroom so I thought the people inside the TV could see me walking out I mean that's how old I am Seth but uh, you know those uh, you know oh you know we didn't have 1300 channels on TV and yeah. uh, you know those kind of things so uh, we didn't have any air conditioning in our house so you know, in the summertime, you just get up at 7:30, 8 o'clock, and uh, each of the elementary buildings in town had a recreation program. So uh, we'd get up early and go over there, and uh, they had all kind of activities over there, Seth. You know, tether ball and softball and football and chess and checkers, and they had a gentleman who taught crafts at the junior high school. You could make crafts over there and things like that. So we'd probably spend the majority of our day over there just getting into a pickup basketball game or whatever came our way, and. Uh, to spend a lot of time outside uh, playing because inside the house if it was 85 degrees outside it was 100 degrees in the house with five fans blowing and stuff like that so uh, I probably to the young people that will watch this interview they probably think I was uh, around in the medieval age uh, by, by what I'm describing stuff but uh, I think that's where a lot of my competitive competitive side came from uh, just uh, Going over there, getting involved, playing all kinds of whether it was chess or checkers or tetherball or basketball or or whatever. That's kind of how my generation grew up and yeah. uh, and those type of things. So uh, you know, I've always loved this community. Uh, you know, I love the uh, you know the, the variety of people in this town. Uh, you know, I, I just uh, you know we've always been a town with a, a strong work ethic, work ethic stuff and. You know, we've, we've fallen on hard times over the last 20 years or so with a lot of jobs leaving and that kind of thing. And uh, But still, I see people in this community who care deeply about this community and the young people in this community, including our staff and the people who work for the schools, but also businesses and uh, you know, people who uh, have spent most, or if not all, of their lives in this community. They have a great sense of pride about Fostoria. When you went to go play for the Iowa Hawkeyes, um, the football team. What position did you play, and why were you playing? Did you ever have that sort of knowledge, thinking maybe you wanted to go pro or into a higher rank? Well, you know, when I was a uh, junior in high school, I started getting some letters from some colleges. Seth, I made some all district teams and you know, maybe third team all state after my junior year. I was a quarterback in high school, and I uh, started getting some letters uh, from some people. I still have a, a letter in, in my. Uh, in my little drawer from Woody Hayes uh, when he was at Ohio State. Uh, he never recruited me, but you know they send those letters out to uh, just about everybody that makes any kind of all-state recognition and things like that. Uh, you, know, you know, we're watching you, know, we're interested in you and things like that. Uh, although I was never actively recruited by Ohio State, I would love to have been, but uh, wasn't good enough. But uh, you know, it was. Uh, Got a lot of schools from Mac schools or letters from Mac schools of interest, Bowling Green, Toledo, Akron, you know, pretty much all of the Mac schools. And uh, uh, I took a re recruiting trip to uh, Minnesota, took a recruiting trip to Purdue, uh, flew out to Arizona, and, uh, and then visited Iowa also. And 
remember I was playing basketball, it was my senior year, and I'd already taken a couple of those trips where I had to miss a basketball game. And we had a pretty good team, Seth, so uh, University of Pittsburgh called, called me late and wanted me to go down there to their school. And, you know, I did some thinking about it because it was a weekend where we had two basketball games, and I'd have to fly out Friday, miss Friday and Saturday's game. And, uh, and you know, so I did a little investigating, and they were 0-10 the year that they, you know, my senior year when they called me and uh, I thought, ah, well, you know, I've I, I pretty well decided I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to Iowa and, uh, you know, I, I, I like the coaching staff and those type of things and uh, four years later they were national champions. So. <laughs> <laughs> Pittsburgh was, so yeah. I guess I guess maybe I didn't make the best of choices, but I love my experience at Iowa. Um, again, Seth, I, I just go back to you know, the teams that I've been a member of as either a player or a coach, uh, it was a big part of my life. You know, I looked at those people as brothers, you know, really that sense of family, you know, where you know, you're going to go out and do what you have to do. You know, I'm going to do the best that I can because I want the team to be successful. And, uh, you know, fortunately I was elected as a co-captain my senior year at the uh, University of Iowa. and. Uh, Ended up being the most valuable player out there. I went out there as a quarterback, Seth. And then after my freshman year, our head coach got fired. Uh, we went 0 10 my freshman year, and uh, we were 9 and 1 in high school. So that was quite a quite an adjustment for me to uh, kind of go from the pinnacle to the to the pits, and uh, so to speak. And uh, so they let the head coach now brought in a different head coach, and so they moved me from quarterback to fullback in spring ball of my freshman year, and. Uh, I remember the first time I, I played fullback, we had a, a linebacker that was an all Big Ten linebacker. And I got to tell you something, I'm a quarterback. I've never blocked anybody in my life, you know. So, about the third play that I'm in there, they run an isolation play where the fullback leads up in front of the tailback and blocks the linebacker. You know, so I go in there, I'm just standing straight up, you know. It's like I'm playing patty cake with this guy, you know. So, I go in there and I'm, you know, stomping my feet and stuff like that. And, Next thing I know, my helmet's flying off my head, and uh, this linebacker gives me a forearm, and I'm knocked out. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know what happened. You know, and the next thing I know, the, you know, I'm waking up, and the trainer's over me with these smelling salts they used to use and hold under your nose to wake you up and stuff like that. And uh, you know, so I had to, you know, get off the field and sit out of practice and things like that. And of course, they didn't have the concussion protocol that they have today. You know, I, was, I think I was out for about. 40 minutes and uh, coach came over. How you feeling, Tom? Oh, I'm good. I'm good, coach. Well, get back in there, you know. <laughs> so, okay, uh, no problem. But uh, you know, the linebacker and I knew each other pretty well and, uh, and got along very well. And he came up to me after practice and he said, Tom, don't ever come at me like that again. You know, I'm just, I just react. You know, when I saw you running at me, you know, I. I did what I did. I didn't mean to knock you out. <laughs> and I got to, oh, that's fine, Andre. I understand you. Know, I'll, I'll get better. So, you know, it's only in those memories like that, Seth, that uh, and I'm kind of glad for the technological advances now, Seth, because, uh, you know, when I left uh, Iowa back in, in uh, you know, the, the late 70s, uh, I lost touch with a lot of those guys that I played football with and stuff like that. And uh, now with Facebook, I'm reconnecting with all these people, we're having conversations, and uh, it's funny when you spend four or five years with, with a group of people that, uh, you know, they'll give me their cell phone number now, and I'll give them mine, and they'll call me out of the blue and, and have a conversation, but uh, it's like you were just with them last week, you know, it's, it's that connection that, uh, you know, the relationship that you build, you know, we were, we were very close, we were good friends, uh, you know, we went out and and practice three hours a day, did winter workouts, spring football, all those kind of things, and uh, it really became, you know, like a family. So uh, I'm very happy now that I'm connecting with all these people, uh, you know, via Facebook and now with cell phone numbers and things like that. So uh, it's uh, it's always been a huge part of my life, and uh, very, you know, very uh, committed to the relationships with the people that I've had the, the pleasure of calling my friend. Why are you playing uh, football for high school and college? Or like one of the greatest moments that you probably ever had? Well, you know, in college, Seth, uh, I, they eventually moved me to tight end. And uh, uh, my last game, we played at Michigan State. And uh, uh, we ended up winning the game, which was uh, a great way to end a career. We got better every year. Our record got better every year. And 
you know, back then I was much like they are today, kind of middle of the pack, and uh, you know, it's hard for us to compete against the Ohio States and Michigans and Michigan States and things like that that uh, have that prominent national reputation and win national championships and conference championships and, and things like that. But uh, remember it was in the fourth quarter and it was a close game and uh, we ran a bootleg pass and the quarterback hit me over the middle and I'd never scored a touchdown in college. So I caught the ball and uh, I could see their safety, Tom Darden, who played in the NFL for about 10 years. He was about 10 yards away from me and maybe about 10 yards behind me. So I just tucked the ball and started running as hard as I could, Seth, and uh, he hawked me down on the one yard line and tackled me. So that's uh, that's one of my best memories because I thought for sure I was going to score when I caught yeah. the ball and saw him out of the corner of my eye. But uh, he was a little faster and a little better athlete than I was, and, and he, uh, he hawked me down at the one yard line. But it led to the winning touchdown, and uh, it was a great way to end my, my college football career. You was head coach for Foster Area football, the football team for 12 years. What made you stop? Uh, you know, with the principal's job opened at the time, Seth, uh, after the 2008 season. And, uh, you know, I'd been the assistant principal here for 13 years. And uh, the board policy, board of education policy, was that you couldn't be the principal and coach. So it was basically, you know, a decision of where I wanted to go with my uh, my life and my career after that uh, at that point in time. So I decided I would go ahead and apply for the building principal position and uh, you know, go that route and dedicate more of my time to uh, you know, the education of, of the students here at Foster Area Junior Senior High School. Um, as being the principal for the past six years. What were one of the great moments that you would like to share as being principal? I think every May or early June, Seth, when uh, we have our graduation ceremony and uh, you know, we see those uh, students that have worked so hard to uh, get to this point in their life. And uh, I just like looking at the kids as they walk on the stage and as they're seated and as they receive their diploma. Uh, just the, uh, the sense of achievement and accomplishment that I see on their faces. Uh, I love the, the family support that we get uh, you know, we've had the graduation ceremony in the auditorium for the last several years and uh, you know, each, each senior is given you know, eight to ten tickets and things like that and the place is packed you know, and uh, you know, it's just very very heartwarming to see you know, those kids and uh, the confidence that they portray. Uh, you look at them and you've talked to a lot of them about their dreams and what they want to do after high school, what they want to accomplish, where you're going, to, what are you going to do, where are you going to go to school at, uh, what are you going to study, uh, you know, you know, what kind of plans do you have, and that kind of thing. And uh, you know, it's uh, it, it, by the same token, said it's a lot of pressure. You know, you've been in the school system for 12 years, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's it's over with, and uh, you know, you, you have plans, but. I don't know, when I was 18, Seth, I didn't really know, you know, I got a football scholarship. I didn't know that I would go to college because there were multiple factories in town that paid well and things like that. So before I started getting these letters from these colleges, you know, uh, no one in my family had ever graduated from college. And, uh, you know, it was something in the back of my mind and things like that, that, uh, you know, I might go to college or I might just get a job and go to work and, you know, spend... 35, 40 years making spark plugs or something like that and stay in the community and those kind of things. But uh, I'm glad that things worked out the way that they did. And, uh, you know, but those, those kind of things, like just my interactions with the students, I think, are, are the highlight. You know, I like going to the choir concerts, the band concerts, the athletic events, uh, you know, National Honor Society induction ceremonies, you know, just anything where our kids are spotlighted and that they have the opportunity to go out and, uh, show what they can do. So those, uh, those things uh, stick with me. Um, how do you feel about retiring? Are you going to miss being a principal? I'm definitely going to miss it, Seth. Um, you know, I think that uh, you know, I've built some great relationships with uh, the adult faculty members in the school building. Uh, you know, I've been around for a long time, so I've seen a lot of people come and go, and uh, many of the people that have retired before me you know, I still stay in contact with uh, fantasy football leagues and stuff like that, you know, and, uh, you know, it, it's always good to talk with those people. And, uh, you know, education is, uh, you know, a field 
you know, where you, you you know you have to love what you do. I mean, you're you're interacting with kids, and uh, you know, on any given day, you might have 120 different psychologies walking into your classroom. You know, 100 120 different you know, different students. You know, and uh, you know, it's a real blessing. You know, that teachers can interact with all of those kids. Uh, you know, build relationships. I think that's very important. Uh, in any school, and uh, certainly here at Fostoria, and you have to uh, have that mutual respect between student and teacher, and uh, you know, I, I think we have that here at Fostoria. I'm very proud of our faculty and the work that they do, and the energy they put forth in their job, and uh, their dedication to uh, the students of Fostoria Junior Senior High School. I want to thank you for coming out and having this interview with me. It's been a pleasure, Seth. It's been a pleasure having you as a principal. We're all going to miss you. I hope you have a good retirement. Back to you. All right, that was great. Thank you, Seth and Mr. Grime, for that wonderful interview. Uh, from the TV department to everyone else, I'm sure, uh, we are definitely going to miss Mr. Grine. Uh, we wish him the best in his retirement. And now we are going to hear from Drew Bauman, our incoming principal, former Fostoria graduate. Seth is going to have a sit-down interview with uh, Drew Bauman and we are going to hear about where he feels he's going to take the high school uh, in his role as principal. Hey guys, my name's Seth. We recently just found out that Mr. Brian will be retiring next year and we'll have Mr. Bauman being our principal next year and I asked him to come down here and have an interview with me right after we did with Mr. Brian and we're just going to ask him a few questions just like we did with Mr. Brian. All right. So how do you feel about being named the new principal of Fostoria High School? Um, I, I think excited would be an understatement, Seth. This is something that, you know, since uh, entering into education, um, you know, is kind of a goal of mine. Um, when you go off to college, you don't think you're going to come back home necessarily. As I entered the, the workforce and um, my wife, who's also a Fostoria graduate, began teaching in Fostoria, it just became really appealing to me. So it was, you know, wouldn't it be neat to you know, to go back home and eventually become an administrator because that was another goal when I went into education was I wanted to be a principal uh, further on in my career. Um, so this opportunity, you know, following Mr. Grind, who was an administrator when I was here, a coach here, um, getting a chance to be a Redmond and, and kind of lead our building, our students, our community, is one of the greatest honors I've, I've ever had in my professional career. Uh, what challenges do you think you might face? There's going to be, or we have some unique challenges. I mean, we look at logistically, we're a unique building with grades 7 through 12. I mean, that's ages 12 to 18. I mean, that's a big, you're transitioning from an elementary school to a junior high, and you're transitioning from a high school student to an adult in the workforce or off into your college, you know, college path. So those are the challenges. I think um, our biggest approach is making sure that we're making our school serve all students, no matter what background you come from, no matter what your goals are. We want to ensure your success. So making that work for each and individual, each and every individual student in that wide array of grades and making them feel comfortable here and really supporting their needs is our biggest challenge and something honestly I'm excited about. Yeah. Um, as you were growing up here, what was it like here in Fostoria? I mean, you know, you, you hear um, the, uh, the differences, oh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. You know, Fostoria itself is, is similar to, to the town I grew up in now and say, oh, there's not a lot to do here. You, you find things to do, but um, obviously with recession and things like that, the town has changed as far as the amount of jobs available. Um, this town was able to support a lot of a lot of uh, blue-collar, hard-working, um, real salt-of-the-earth type people. And that's that's the town I grew up in. That's what, what you know, I'm proud of. You know, my father is a, is a guy who goes to work when I was young, six, seven days a week, sometimes 12 hours a day, you know, to support our family. Uh, my mom you know, went back to school and got her education and, and teaches now. So um, that's those are the types of things I really enjoy about our community and, and the kind of, you know, the the willingness to to work hard for what you what you need, for what you want, and earn the things that you get. I'm a firm believer that nothing in life is ever given in, given to you, that you earn it. And um, if you're going to uh, want something, you're going to have to work hard to get it. It won't be easy. What was it like growing here? Going here and foster at your time and going, going to school here. Yeah, it was it was pretty neat. I mean, I was, you know, I was in school the last time we won a football state championship, and those were my you know my childhood years, seeing the, uh, you know, the community rally and and you know the string of success was was something that's going to be hard to ever match again. But um, 
it was a, it was really awesome experience, but it was more so about that again that community environment, you know, the family environment, um, you know, that kind of carrying a little bit of a, a chip on your shoulder and you know being proud to wear that ribbon on your chest to go to class here to go to school here to see the success that people have had after they've graduated. You know, I was in a class and I thought I was a pretty good student, and you know I won't go into my GPA wasn't you know, but I I did well in school and I was you know, bull up behind a lot of really intelligent, really smart people that have gone on to great success. So that's the biggest thing I'm proud of. And it's a lot of the same teachers, you know, it's people in this building were people that I sat in classrooms with um, and led us as students to successful careers. Um, I, a lot of friends, classmates that I've known are extremely successful. And I think every one of them will attribute that to this school and this community. What activities were you involved with? I, uh, I focus primarily on athletics when I see I play three sports. I played football, basketball, and baseball for all four years of high school. You know, there's the, the French club that you could do, or the, at the time there was a um, Future Educators of America, um, so it was kind of students that were interested in going in the education field could be involved in. Um, you know, those things I guess I would say I was a little less committed to. You know, they were there, I was, I was on the, the team, but not fully engaged. But athletics has been such a huge part of my life. Um, you know, it's not just uh, going out on, into a field and playing, but, you know, learning how to interact with people of various backgrounds. Um, I think I've learned a lot of leadership qualities through those experiences through my coaches. Um, I've had very great people to be leading examples for me, um, you know, from Mr. Grind uh, in various roles now as kind of I've been behind him as an administrator. And, um, you know, there's a coach, Gibson Burke's head basketball coach, is, their team's 23-0 and 0 going to districts, and I was fortunate to have that person be um, Brent Liskey, be a social studies teacher, a baseball coach, the person I student taught for. So athletics has given me a lot of great examples of, uh, of what it means to be successful and interact with kids. After you graduated from Pastoria, where did you go? I attended Bowling Green State University. Um, that's you know one of the, kind of the few schools that I've really looked into. Um, it's a great school for educators. It's got a really strong reputation, not just here in Ohio, but across the country, um, producing strong, um, strong teachers. I actually get a chance to go back for the last two years now and speak to their uh, future social studies teachers about you know, kind of entering the workforce. Um, I was on the five-year plan again, going back to my, you know, how uh, ambitious I was as a student. I took my time. I enjoyed college, uh, so I ended there in 2003 and graduated in 2008. Uh, was a Bachelor of Science in Integrated Social Studies, so it was a good experience. I, you know, Falcon for life. As you go into Bowling Green, what made you want to come back to Boston? You know, um, my first year out of first year out of college, I taught at Elmwood, and it was a great experience. I enjoyed it. Um, a lot of good people at Elmwood. Um, I taught eighth grade there, and at the same time, my wife, Mrs. Ballman, who's now the principal of Longfellow, was teaching uh, middle school art. Uh, I think you might have had her even then. So. Um, it was, uh, we, you know, both being from Fall Story and, and we were living in another town at the time and we're considering kind of our futures and I did something about being home. You know, I, my dad is a graduate of Fall Story. Um, his, his dad was a graduate of Fall Story. Just something about coming back home. Again, the, the kind of the community aspect, you know, being a part of this town and what it stands for and what it means and um, contributing back to that was the biggest appeal to me. So the next year, there was an opening at the middle school and I was actually, um, able to uh, interview and, and get an eighth grade social studies teaching position here. So, you know, we, we bought a house here, we, you know, raised our kids here. Um, it's It's been a really neat and uh, exciting experience for me to be able to come back home and contribute the way I have. While you were going to school here in Pastoria, did anything come to your mind thinking, I'm going to become a principal here one time? I, you know, I'd probably be lying if I thought realistically, you know, oh, I'll just come back and be principal one day. But, you know, I, as a college student even, you think, oh, you know, living in Bowling Green at the time, oh, it'd be great to just teach at Bowling Green and, and live here because it's, you know, it's a cool it's a cool town when I was living there. But you don't understand, you know, there's, there's got to be jobs available and other people will want those jobs. So when you start getting into the realistic nature, it's kind of, and I've been fortunate, you know, that things have timed up well for me as I've, you know, been in kind of the right place at the right time. But um, I don't know that I was ever 17 years old looking at my teachers even, let alone the building administrators and principals saying, you know, and 10 years, 12 years, 15 years, you know, that, that could be me. So I, once I started into my career, once I kind of started down that path, I thought it was a real strong possibility and, you know, kind of something I've worked hard to, to achieve. But 
I was sitting in your seat, he rolls reverse, I don't know if I would have really thought that was going to happen. Yeah, that, that probably won't happen to me. <laughs> don't doubt yourself, you never know. Um, um, what are some other paths that you thought you might want to go down to, other than becoming a principal? You know, that's, you know, teaching was really kind of what I wanted to be. Again, I was fortunate to have strong um, teachers in my school experience. Uh, I think the first one, and you know, I've shared this with a lot of people, is uh, Mrs. Matz, a fifth grade teacher of mine. Um, she taught here for a very long time and helped a lot of kids, and that was probably what first led me to believe I wanted to be a teacher. Um, and again, in eighth grade, you know, really loved social studies, had a great teacher in that time, Mr. Leskai, uh, Brent Leskai. Um, and that kind of solidified for me. I never really considered another career. I mean, there was a point in college when I kind of thought, you know, is, is this the right road? And I went, well, what else would I do? And I couldn't think of anything. I mean, really, this is, you know, this is what I've always wanted to do when I've really been thinking about a career, you know, in a serious fashion since a very young age. Um, so I don't know if there was another path. I think, um, if anything, if I stayed in the classroom and continued coaching um, in my first years of teaching, I coached all three sports I played. Um, so I stayed busy, you know, coaching football and basketball and baseball. So I think that's might have where my career would have led me. I, I still enjoy getting out on, or you know, getting out and kind of mixing up with kids and kind of helping them, you know, learn the value of sports in their in their lives. But you know, I, I would see myself getting more into coaching and you know, maybe potentially being a head coach and kind of leading a program. I've always been interested in leadership roles and, and kind of the value that brings. From when you went to Foster Warrior High School, what changes have you seen from then to now? I think, I mean, the biggest change, obviously, you talk about the size of the town, the size of the school. Um, I think I graduated with a class of 168 kids. You know, we graduate roughly 100 students, and that's, that's attributed to a lot of things. You know, size of the town, opening up, open enrollment, not something that you were able to do uh, freely when I was in school, um, which is something that we need to address as a building, too, because our school has value and has a lot to offer students in our community, and, and I firmly believe that, and I think that we can offer things that other schools can't. Um, those are some of the, you know, you look at just the face value changes, you know, less kids in the building, a 7 through 12 building as opposed to a 9 through 12 building. Something that concerns me and I think that we all need to address is I think some of our students have started to believe things about their own positions in our town, in our society. Uh, maybe they don't have as much ownership over their learning. Maybe they don't know that um, this building produces a lot of successful people and can take them to the places they need to be. I mean, I have pride in what I, where I came from, the work, the education I received, the work I did as a student here, and the work I currently do. And I think that's something that we need to stress to our students that we are all together, a part of this community. That we are all together in efforts of making school fun and exciting, and and a place that you get an education. And that's you know your input is as valuable as mine. So that's kind of the the message that we need to send and something I plan on addressing as we move forward. Yeah, I've seen a lot of changes since I've been here too. Like when I first came here, I remember we were having the lockers in our commons where, mm -hmm. where it was just lined right. up, yeah. not against the walls. Yeah, physical changes, wide open space, right? You know, and, and how do we do those things? And how do we place students in, in the right space, you know, by age and, and closest to their classrooms? And, you know, who, where can our seniors be placed to be a leadership example for our students? You know, you as a, you know, going to a senior next year, we expect our seniors to be the kind of lead the way and set the tone for the rest of the building. So where can we push you? What um, privileges or rights or roles can we give you to help that and, and kind of become those leaders that we need you to be? As becoming a future principal of Foster Junior Senior High School, what changes would you like to make? I think, you know, there's there's a lot of things that are going to change. I think, you know, and, and to borrow from Mr. Grind, um, as a football coach, he always told us, you know, there's no staying the same. Every day you're either going to get better or you're going to get worse. So we have to work every single day to get better at whatever we do. If you're a student that's getting better at getting to class on time, then that's what you got to do. If it's getting better at getting your work turned in, um, you know, being diligent, being focused, those are things. As teachers, we're trying to come up with better lessons. We're trying to, you know, engage our students. We're trying to make school more than just, you know, coming to school and going from class to class. It's, it's about making learning meaningful, and that's where we got to get better. Um, I think that can be done through a lot of ways. Something that's being discussed is changing the bell schedule. You know, right now, right now we meet seven periods a day, every day, um, for 50 minutes. You know, there, maybe there's a better way to do it. Um, we've got some teachers that have volunteered to assist with that, um, and, and we've started meeting already, so there could be some uh, changes in that way. I also think our approach to it. I, I had a lot of fun when I was a kid, you know, and I, I don't remember the, what I did on Tuesday, January 15th, and in, uh, 
my biology class. I just you know those aren't the things that you retain. That information is important and you'll use it, but you're not going to remember every specific U lesson you get out of every single classroom. We need to make school meaningful to students. We need to make it a place where you can come and be comfortable and create relationships and, and lasting memories that you're going to carry with you. Um, that's my goal. I think it might be a little lighthearted. I think we need to focus on positivity, coming up with solutions for uh, problems that we may face. And again, that's a collaborative effort. Community, students, parents, teachers, um, all together working towards one goal. Right, well, I want to thank you for coming thank down. Thank you. Appreciate it. interview with me. Yeah. That was our future principal, Mr. Ballman. Back to you. All right, Seth. That was a great set of interviews. Uh, Mr. Ballman and Mr. Grind really appreciated that. Thought it was a nice uh, moment for us to see the torch being passed and uh, where we're going and where we came from when it comes to the principal here at the high school. Uh, and we will see all the rest of you when we have another episode of Focus on Redmond.